Drop it. <laughs> it's sure beginning to look an awful lot like Christmas meat. And that means it's time to decorate the tree. So we'll be needing Christmas lights. So stick around and we'll start untangling. All right, just pop the top and let's separate those cards. First, we'll build our event deck, which is comprised of the six bubble bulb cards and the six event cards. Shuffle them up and set them out. We turn the deck sideways so you know which one it is. Next, separate the pattern cards, player aid cards, and the character cards. Pretty much everything else goes into the main bulb deck, but here's the itemization. Six different bulb colors with seven cards per color. Three draw event cards, five broken bulbs, and eight plug cards. Just shuffle those and give that deck a place of honor, and shuffle those pattern cards while you're at it. Now the table is set. Time to get the players hooked up. Take the Santa card and enough characters to equal the number of players in this round. Mix them up and deal one per player. Santa is player one, naturally. Deal each player five bulb cards and two pattern cards. Now don't look at your own bulb cards. Remember, you're working in the dark here. You'll hold your cards facing out so your opponents can see them and you can see theirs. But you can peek at your pattern cards. These show you the sequence of cards you'll need to play in front of you. You'll pick the one you wish to start with, as well as the direction that you wish to go in. All right, here are four things you can do on your turn. You may do any or none of these, but you must do them in order if you do. Swap. Take any card from your hand and give it to an opponent, then snatch one of theirs away and put it into your hand. Now it'll still face outward, so to remember where it is, twist it any way you like to kind of mark what you've got. Play. Take a card from your hand and put it in front of you on the table. It'll either begin your pattern, or it'll continue it in the direction that you chose. If it isn't the next color that you need, <whistles> off to the trash. If it's a broken bulb, it stays, and you can move on to the next color in the pattern. But you will have to replace the bulb eventually. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. When you do replace it, just place the missing color on top. If you play Draw Event Card, flip the top card of the event deck. Do what it says, and remove that card from the game. Bubble bulbs are wild, meaning they count as any color. Handy. These conditions apply any time cards are added, incidentally. Next is Sale. Drop a card from your hand onto the table along with the top card of the bulb deck. If either or both are event cards, deal with those. Other than that, you have two options. First, you can pick one to add to your set and discard the other. Or second, you can bribe an opponent with one of them for information. If they agree, you get to ask them one question and they must give a one-word answer. Like, do I have any red bulbs in my hand? Or, how many plugs have I got? Etc. I'm sure you could delve deeper with more personal questions, but that's not exactly going to help you win the game, now is it? Once the deal is done, they must add the card to their pattern, then discard the other. Finally is hand refill. I'm not sure in what universe you would want to skip this one. Just draw back up to five cards from the bulb deck. That's it. If the deck is empty, reshuffle the discard. Whammo! Done. When you complete your pattern, which can't have any unfixed broken bulbs, flip your pattern card so your mates can check your work. Then discard the colored lights, but keep broken or bubble bulb cards for later scoring, and display the finished pattern proudly. Before beginning your next pattern, you'll need to play a plug card. Then you can begin populating the next string of lights. If a player completes their second pattern, then the end game has begun. Play continues until the first player's turn is reached. Then it's time for scoring. Two completed patterns is the victory condition. So if this is you, congratulations! If there's a tie, the title goes to the player with the least amount of broken bulbs. If it's still tied up, then it's the least bubble lights. Say, I told you you weren't done with them yet. All right, so that's the main game. But there's a whole book of alternate game modes, including no less than two solo variants, so there's a lot to discover. It's easy to use words like charming, clever, unique, adorable, to sum up a small game like this one. And indeed they occurred to me often. 
but let's detail some of the highs and some of the lows like any other game. Here's some good stuff. This game isn't really about storytelling, and yet the way you fumble around in the dark does put you into the slippers of a frustrated decorator trying to make sense of a tangle of lights. So you get to experience that order out of chaos feeling as you start working things out, which is rewarding. I could also imagine this game without that aspect, making it a pretty basic hand management experience. But it's a good thing they didn't. The fact that this angle was used makes the game more memorable. I certainly remember all those card games from my youth, where we played with cards stuck to our foreheads. Good times. And now the bad stuff. Well, the less good stuff. Actually, we didn't find much to complain about, but these were more areas of potential improvement than actual design flaws. Firstly, the box doesn't like to open. We added a ribbon to ours to help to pry it open, and we're hoping it'll soften up someday. Or maybe we'll cut a few semi-circles in there. But in any case, this needs to be hacked. Or at least ours did. Also, the cards are fairly thin. Do not play this game facing a light source, so you'll be able to see some of the fronts, which mucks things up but good. Also, the card backs could use more variety for sorting purposes. I can understand that the event card backs must match the bulb deck because the playable bubble bulbs are in there. I suppose a small paper playmat could have also made it easier to tell the two decks apart at a glance. Embarrassingly, we did draw from the wrong deck once or twice. But the character cards and the player aids could have been different, or they could have matched the pattern cards instead. This isn't really a problem. I just like sorting cards by the backs whenever possible. Well, that's about it. It's made of good stuff, and definitely a game you should try out this December. And they're not done yet. Many promo characters have been announced, including the Krampus card, which was unveiled recently. Not that the characters do anything, but who knows what they have in mind. It seems like there's room to grow. Also, if you hurry, I do believe there's still a small supply of those Rudolph ornaments to add a little tabletop flair to your tree. Ornaments and lights go together well like, um, rum and eggnog. Well, thanks for stopping in for this Pirate's Parlay. Make sure to like this video if it did you any good, and subscribe to our tomfoolery to be the first to know when more gaming adventures go live. And we'll see ya next time. Definitely a game you should try out this December. To match the bulb deck because the playable bubble bulb bulbs are in there. Fuck. Whose stupid idea was this? Yes! First try! Upward angle. Words on ceiling. Mmm. Ho, ho, ho. No surprises here. Hit it. Let's do shots.